In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can clean out your intake manifold, take out all of that carbon and bring back some power loss that you're probably feeling from that heavy buildup. I'm going to be showing you the simple steps I use to successfully do that job. This is going to be the sped up version of how you remove carbon out of your engine, the manifold and on the cylinder head side around the valves. This is a diesel engine off a of BMW that I'm actually doing this on, but I'm trying to showcase the cheapest and easiest way to do it. Various ways to clean. You can use oven cleaner. You can use cans, which I am in this video, and then the chemical clean, which is a professional style cleaning. This carburetor clean that I'm using here is a $7 can from Repco. Um, you can pretty much get any can that you want. The second cleaner I use is a more expensive one. That's P26 diesel foaming intake cleaner. That's something that you would typically use when the engine is hot and you'd run it through the intake and it'd soften down the carbon over a period of time. I'm using it on the softening after I scrape off as much carbon as I can on this and it works very effectively for that. So the first thing, basic tools, screwdriver, pick and take off all the heavy buildup in there. So you use a pick in this instance, scrape in as far as you can into the manifold and take out all of that. It's going to take a bit of time. It's a dirty job. I recommend using gloves while you're doing this and remove all of that that you can. My second setup here is after all the scraping is done. And that's when I use the cans that I've purchased to help soften down that last remaining layer of carbon that's in there. And I have a couple of drip trays set up. I'm also using my PPE, including a mask because this stuff is potent and you don't want that stuff getting into your lungs as you're spraying. So I foam in in the intake cleaner and while I'm sped up here, I do take a lot of time doing this and I allow the stuff to work through, including the carbon cleaner. And a recommendation I'd have for the very latter part of that clean is using different types of brushes. So paint guns, you can get various different bristle brushes. They're very effective in getting in those different ports and cleaning out as effectively as possible. This is the very last stage of the manifold clean. I'm just going to jump to a part of my full length video uh, because it's important information before you put the manifold back on. What? I would advise doing before you put it all back together is to actually blow out all of this. As you soften down all that carbon, as that soot buildup has been broken down so extensively, you certainly don't want clumps to fall into your engine and cause an issue uh, with valve sticking. So I'll just show, even after all my cleaning, there's still heavy chunks coming out. And you can see over here where I scraped some of it and wiped it on a rag. I have used about 10 different rags gathering it. Um, also make sure wherever the seal is that it's perfect. You wanna have that all cleaned off. I have to do a little bit more on it, but where that seal sits, you need to have it immaculate. You do not want any sludge or dirt in there, which could cause an issue when you put it back on. And once I'm happy with all the cleaning on the manifold, including the attaching parts, the air inlet valve and that air intake pipe, I'm ready to focus on the engine side. Now, while working on the engine side, there's only a couple of things we really need to focus on. Number one is having the valves closed. Valves have got to be closed and we go one cylinder at a time. Reason being is if the valves are open and you start scraping, you're trying to take the carbon off, you're guaranteed to have stuff fall in to that cylinder on top of the piston. And of course, if there's anything on top of the piston, it can damage as you're rotating the engine over. So crankshaft pulley, I'm using a half inch ratchet here. This is an e-torque on this particular vehicle and then we simply just rotate the engine over while watching inside for the valves to fully close and once you've confirmed those valves are fully closed you can prep the area and get ready to clean that cylinder out i have a rag directly under cylinder one and i'm using a longer screwdriver in this case and scraping off as much as possible down into the port as far as I can, right to the back of the valves, and I just continue to scrape that off. The next stage is a vacuum. I have a, just a pipe attachment onto a shop vacuum, and I'm taking out all the loose bits that would have fallen in when I was scraping with that flat screwdriver. The main reason for that is I'm not going to be using any of the Carby Clean while I'm using electrical equipment for the fire risks that comes with it. 
I'm then using Carby cleaner afterwards and I am using a bristle brush to clean up that port and I'm just repeating this process over and over again until I'm happy with the outcome. And once I'm at this stage, you can see that there's a pool of Carby cleaner remaining down that shows that the valves are nicely sealed and I'm ready to blow all that out because I'm happy with the cleaning at this point. So just using shop air, blowing out that area, cleaning off as much as I can and then it is as simple as rinse and repeat. One cylinder is now done and we're moving on to the next one. While on cylinder two, I tape off cylinder one. And here's a look at the vast improvement we have when doing this cleaning. You can see there's a huge improvement from where we started to where we are. And then I focus on the cleaning before I reinstall the intake manifold. And I use 3M Scotch-Brite to just scuff up that area and have it ready for fit back. After I have everything put back together, I run the engine, have it up to operating temperature. When I've confirmed it's all good, it's then bringing on a road test. And while on that road test, I was able to confirm that the vehicle had much more power. We had a fantastic result. No warning lights on afterwards and the job was successful. It really is as easy as that. This is not a difficult job. It's just a time consuming job as you go through the meticulous cleaning that is required to be successful. I do have an extended video of this up on my channel already. If you want a bit more detail on each stage as it goes, I will link that in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.